Warning! This podcast contains themes of extreme violence and murder. Subject matter may be offensive to some listeners. Discretion advised. Welcome to another episode of Evil Transgression, your homicide headquarters here in podcasting. I'm Josh, and with me as always, Dustin and Rex. What's going on? Hey, what's up? I have been blown away by this picture that we have that was sent to us by a listener. Really? I don't think I've seen this yet. You have seen this. Kiona's. Oh, Kiona's artwork. It's great. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, absolutely amazing. So we're, I mean, and then she sent us uh, a little gift as well. The gift was sweet. It was. So a huge shout out to Kiana. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. I told you Kiki was going to be my friend. (laughs) (laughs) You did. This picture is radical, though. Like, we're going to put it up so we can show people. Right. But it is awesome. It's probably going to be a shirt. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. That is, we'll deal with, we'll talk with Kiona about that. <laughs> She's the boss. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, how was everybody's week? Well. I'm, I'm sure that somebody got married. Yep. Who oh. would have thought that rectual healing would have settled down? It wow. finally happened. Sorry, ladies. Rex is taken. <laughs> wow. Well, that's the end of your life. (laughs) I'm going to tell Stacy to skip this episode. (laughs) Kidding. Kidding. Uh, I feel bad for her. Really? Yeah. Why is that? She has to deal with you now forever. (laughs) But she was already dealing with him. Yeah, but now it's forever. Yes. Forever, ever. Forever, ever? (laughs) Forever, ever. Never really lasts that long. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So, congratulations, man. Thank, Thank you. Nice. Yes. Good job. Pretty good. Thanks. We're happy for you. You look happy. We are. He looks miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Who, me or Rex? <laughs> you right now. <laughs> when we showed up uh, to record today, Rex looked miserable, too. Like, oh, he man. was not getting no sleep. Yeah, I was like, this, yeah. oh, God, Welcome this time to change. Time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we had to consummate, so. Wow. <laughs> We should definitely have put an extra uh, <laughs> disclaimer on this. Episode. <laughs> Close your ears, kids. Oh, man. What's consummate, Mom? I was actually going to ask the same thing. I don't know oh, if yeah. either. Oh, my God. It's, fine. it's um, how you make the marriage official, Dustin. Is that the birds and the bees? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. He's going to start using that now. Like, hey, honey, you want to consummate? <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, so we have a gentleman today, um, just an evil dude. But he, I mean, it's really one thing he does. Not, I mean, one event he does that really makes him a bad guy. <laughs> then you say there's no info on this guy anyway. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those hidden cases. Like, so it should be a, a fresh case for a lot of people. I mean, some people may have heard of him. Some people may know him. (laughs) Sorry if you do. (laughs) But uh, I say we jump right in. Yep. Let's go. Buckle up, evil mob, as we discuss David Francis Early. David Early spent most of his life in and out of prison. He had served time in Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, and Colorado. So he gets around, right? On April 22, 1958, a 29-year-old David Early stepped outside of the gates of Fort Leavenworth Federal Prison in Kansas after serving time for aggravated robbery. 
He had nobody to greet him or take him home. David Early was a loner. He was released on parole after stating he wanted to return to his home state of Colorado where his uncle, Merle A. Knight, was going to help him get back on his feet. Merle Knight was actually a distant relative that had served as an attorney for Early. Merrill was a good man who had felt bad for David Early. He did what he could do to help the young trouble man out, even inviting him to his home several times in the past. But to David Early, Merrill Knight was the only friend he had ever had, someone he could trust. But Early wasn't someone Merrill Knight could trust, and that's the problem. But nonetheless, the free man David Early got on a bus in Kansas and traveled to Denver, Colorado. He arrived on Thursday, April 24th, 1958, and registered to stay at the downtown YMCA. The next day, he took a taxi to Merrill Knight's home in the Greenwood Village suburb around noon. David Early knocked on the door, but no one was home. But that didn't keep David Early out. I mean, he has made a career of being a criminal. Yeah. I mean, so a guy that has uh, a lifetime of, you know, theft and breaking and entering and robbery gets to a house when no one's home, what's he going to do, right? Rob. Early went around the house where he found an unlocked basement door. Now, I knew a lot of people that leaves their house unlocked to this day. Really? And it blows my mind. Oh, I never do. No. But again, this is late 50s here. I mean, yeah, it, like, it was different then. And know. this is a this is a nice nice neighborhood. Greenwood Village is a nicer suburb. Uh, so it was probably like what you see on like Leave it to Beaver. Like, <laughs> they're all out there like mowing their lawns in, in a suit and tie, suit and tie. Waving, <laughs> waving at their neighbors like, hello, Steve. Hello. <laughs> Just walking into their lawnmower, <laughs> their suit and tie. Oh, like, so Early goes around to the back of the house, finds the basement and basement door unlocked, and invites himself in, pretty much. He went through the house looking for anything he could take, money, jewelry, or anything he could pawn. Now, keep in mind, this is a gentleman that he said was his only friend in life. Uh-huh. He's like, he might be my friend, but I really need money. <laughs> <laughs> In the back of Merrill Knight's closet, he found a 22 caliber bolt-action rifle. David Early took the rifle and sat down in the chair, waiting for the family to return. Apparently, he wasn't going to leave empty-handed. Early sat smoking cigarette after cigarette, waiting. Mm. Why not just take the stuff and leave? They're not even there. Well, apparently, there was nothing that he really wanted there he wanted some money yeah money jewelry maybe the you know they were wearing he he wanted more than what he could get Mm. from from go to a different house take their stuff or just like get a job or do that that does help stay out of trouble might be hard though with a criminal record you know well it's a lot easier than breaking into people's house that you know and then sitting and waiting for them with a cigarette Mm -hmm. yep True. Now, what we haven't discussed about David Early yet is the fact that when he was serving time previously in Colorado State Penitentiary in Cannon City, he was diagnosed by prison doctors as a, quote, dangerous psychopath. And they let him out. However, none of that factored into him being released from prison time and time again until he found himself sitting in the night's living room. They're like, hey, this guy is a dangerous psychopath. Let's let him out. Let's put him on parole. (laughs) (laughs) Just the system was shit back then too, huh? Yeah, Yeah, I mean, you would think, this is 1958, so you would think over time, we would have figured stuff out like, hey, you know what we shouldn't do? Release crazy people. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Out on their own. We still haven't figured that out to this day. No. Exactly. No. To this day. I mean, God love the people in the justice system. But a bunch of them are idiots. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) They just need us running the justice system. So when you guys vote in 2020... (laughs) (laughs) 
So, uh, finally, someone comes home. Unfortunately, it's Miss Regina Knight. Miss Regina Knight walked into the front door to find a man pointing her husband's rifle at her. Early forced Regina Knight into a bedroom and tied her hands and feet together. David Early then explained he only wanted money. I mean, I'm sure uh, that is a reassuring thing. Like, oh, you got a rifle. Um, you want to rob me? And Oh, he wants money. Yeah. So I feel a little better now that you told me that. Yeah. <laughs> David uh, uh, was then informed by Miss Knight that she had $60 in her purse and he could take it and leave as long as he didn't hurt her. Just take the money and go. 60 bucks. But Early wasn't happy with the $60 and yelled at her that he wanted more and there had to be more in the house. 60 bucks is like... Thirty thousand dollars back in nineteen fifty. Oh, God, man, <laughs> that math was brought to you by Dustin. <laughs> but still, sixty bucks—that's something. And it is nineteen fifty-eight. Sixty bucks is a decent right. chunk of, of robbery money. Oh, in, yeah. in the fifties, right? <laughs> Take the money and go. But he didn't. While David Early was trying to convince Regina Knight to give up more cash, the two Knight children came home. That's not good. No. 17-year-old Kenneth Knight and 15-year-old Karen Knight were coming home from school. David Early met them in the front room with the rifle. He took 15-year-old Karen to the bedroom and tied her up to her bed. So she's in her own room. He took Kenneth into his mother's room and tied him up near the foot of her bed. After he had everyone tied up, Meryl Knight returned home around 5.30. So... He ties up the kids. Now, everybody would naturally think, well, why didn't the kids take off running? Well, if you walk into your house and there's a guy with a rifle and you're a young kid, your first reaction is not going to be like, I need to run. Right. Yeah, you're just going to panic. You know? Yeah. So that's how you get two teenagers tied up. Yeah. So Merle comes home around 530. Like the others, he was met at the front door by David Early and the rifle. Against Merrill Knight's pleading, he was led into another bedroom where he demanded Merrill to tie his own feet together. When Merrill tied his feet together, David Early made him roll over onto his stomach where he fished Merrill's wallet from his back pocket before tying his hands behind his back. So keep this, keep this in mind. Is Merrill Knight knows who David Early is. David yeah. Early is. It's not like... This is a stranger in his home. This is a this is a uh, a young man that he tried to help. Right, right. I mean that he felt sorry for and and tried to help him out of trouble multiple times. I mean mm-hmm. he had given money to him before when he'd gotten out, and he had given him you know time and time again. Just he he felt bad for this kid. Yeah. So he walks into his own house, and here's this young man pointing his own rifle at him. That would totally floor you. Right. Oh, yeah. So he, he gets tied up himself. Um, Early took $127 from the wallet and put it in his pocket with the other 60 After finally getting an additional 77 from the family, making it a total of $264. Early told the Knight family that if everyone remained calm, he would leave when it got dark outside to avoid being seen. So he's got all these people tied up in these rooms. Yeah. He's got his money, but he's like, look, I can't just walk out of here. I got to wait for nighttime, but I will, I will leave everybody alone and, you know, I'll just leave you tied up and we'll just go on our own ways. What's stupid about that is they know who you are. Exactly. Like (laughs) leave it at night or day. Like they know who you are. So, but it, it it remains to be seen. I wonder, you know, if this was the end of the story, I wonder if Merle would have pressed charges on him. As much as he helped him out in the past, yeah. I wonder if it would have been just that. It would have just been like, look, you robbed us. I got nothing left to do for you. Or if he would have been like, look, you brought my family into it. You're in trouble now. Right. You know? It remains to be seen, I guess. But it became 
the plan of, I'm just going to wait till it gets dark outside to leave. Mm-hmm. Sounds legit. Problem is, fate had other plans. And a 47-year-old contractor named Varian Ashbaugh knocked on the door to the home. Ashbaugh had stopped by to see Merrill Knight about a legal matter they had discussed earlier in the day. He had some paperwork to give to him. David Early met Ashbaugh at the door, but this time without the rifle. So what happens is, um, Varian Ashbaugh knocks on the door. Nobody comes at first, but he sees cars in the he sees the car in the driveway. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "This is weird." So he goes to open the door. He he actually turns the knob and pushes the door open, and there's David Early walking towards him. So he stops, like, "Whoa!" You know. Ashbaugh asked if Merrill Knight was home, which David Early explained he was, but he was in the bathtub. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, he's home, but he's in the bathtub. He's taking a bubble bath. I've never had company 6 over. 6 p.m. is like bathtub time for Merrill Knight. <laughs> I've never had company over and been like, I'm going to go take a bath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going right. to jump in the bath real quick. Uh-huh. Well, Ashbaugh then asked if Mrs. Knight was available, but Early told him she was busy as well. So Merle's in the bathtub. Regina's a little busy herself. (laughs) Because of David Early's calm composure, Varian Ashbaugh asked if Early would give the paperwork to Merle for him. Early smiled and said he would be glad to do so. Varian Ashbaugh, who assumed the young man was someone the Knights had hired to watch the house while they went to Las Vegas that weekend, then left the house. So he knew... That the Knights had plans. The, they were taking like a little family trip mm-hmm. to Las Vegas that weekend. That's why he had to drop that paperwork off that night. Mm. So th- that's what he assumed was the reason there was a stranger in the house. Uh-huh, right. Oh, they must have hired him to watch the house, or he might be, you know, a relative or something that's going to house sit for him while they're yeah. on. Or so that's he's like, okay, cool. Well. Here's here's the letter. See you later. <laughs> but the distraction of Ashball was enough for a series of tragic events to take place. When Early went back to check on the Knights, Merrill Knight lunged at him as he walked into the bedroom. Merrill Knight had managed to free himself while David Early was talking to Varian Ashball. When Merrill Knight lunged at David Early, it surprised him, and Early, in a panic, fired the rifle three times. Oh, man. That's where I have a problem. Okay, you you supposedly panicked and fired the rifle three times. Do you guys remember what kind of rifle this is? Bolt action. Yeah. Bolt action, 22 caliber rifle. You don't panic and pull the trigger three times. Right, no. Each shot, you have to reset that bolt. Right. So... You may have panicked on the first shot, but you didn't panic for three shots. No, no. Now, David Early was no longer just a thief. He had now graduated to murder, and he didn't want to leave any witnesses behind. He went to the couple's bedroom and shot Regina Knight once in the head. Mm. He stepped over Kenneth, for some reason not shooting him next, and went to Karen's room where he shot her once in the head. Wow. Dang. While David Early was in Karen's room, his crap knot tying skills were exposed again, and 17-year-old Kenneth freed himself. Kenneth wasted no time this time and made for the front door. By the time David Early could react, Kenneth Knight was through the front door and on a dead sprint away from the house. Early fired once before the 22 caliber rifle jammed. The fired round missed Kenneth. It's good. Yeah. It is good. Mm hmm. But why didn't it jam earlier, you know? Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, he really, uh, I hate to, you know, I hate to tell these criminals how to do stuff, <laughs> but why would you, like, shoot this one and then skip this one and then shoot this one? Just, mm. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I don't know. You think you would have took out the stronger ones first. Then this wouldn't have yeah. happened. But that's just my thought. 
No. But again, here we are trying to give criminals <laughs> like the way to do things right. But hey, kid got out safe. Good. Kenneth ran to the neighbor's house where they were having a dinner party. One that the same Varian Ashbaugh was attending. And the kid screamed, Mother and Dad have been shot. So how about that for a coincidence? Oh, yeah. This kid escapes, takes off running to the neighbor's house. And who's there? The guy that knocked on the door right. Right. of the house not too long ago. And he's like, uh, wait a minute, what's going on? Barry and Ashbaugh and a man named William Pumpley ran from the house just in time to see Merrill Knight's car pulling away from the house. Grabbing his shotgun, Pumpley and Ashbaugh got into a car and chased down Early before they realized the shotgun was empty. Oh, man. It's not a good thing. Nobody thought to check that. It was a, hey, you got to go. Oh, look, they're pulling out of the driveway. Grab the shotgun. Grab yeah, it. Go. You can look at it while you're running. <laughs> you can look at it while you're running. <laughs> you can, like, depending on what kind of shotgun it is, you can check to see if it's loaded. Hey, if there's ever a crime going on, <laughs> I know who I don't want to be there to help. Yeah. So I'm running and looking at this, and I'm going to run smack dab into a tree or something. <laughs> but anyways, they get in the car and realize, hey, wait a minute. The shotgun's worthless. Uh It's got no shells in it. You can beat somebody with it. True. He's in a car. You can hang it out the window, get close to him. (laughs) So you know what they do do? Do do? Yeah. What? Mm. They ram the car with the other car. (laughs) I was was hoping you were going to say that. Solid answer to the problem they were having. Yeah. This caused Early to lose control. David Early jumped from the car and began to flee on foot. But Pumpley and Ashbaugh ran him down. Ran him right on down. Good. By this time, the others from the dinner party had caught up to the tussle. So they're like, not too far away. In order for these people from the dinner party to show up, like, what's going on? Yeah. One of the men held the shotgun on Early, who did not know that the gun wasn't loaded. So it did come back into play. (laughs) Good deal. You know, uh, when you have a shotgun pointed at you, you usually tend to give up. Like, right. hey, yeah. That's the end of this game. If you value your life, some people would be like, I don't even care. <laughs> yeah. Shoot me. Apparently. Come to my funeral, boys. Come <laughs> <laughs> to my funeral. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's good, a good one. That's good. Uh, yeah. Uh. That was that crazy Rambo dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, if you do value your life when a, when a shotgun's pointed at you, that's usually when you tend to say, look, I lost. It's game over. Which is basically what David Early did. Yeah. David Early was arrested when officers arrived on scene. When asked why David Early shot the Knights, he replied, because I needed money. When asked what he needed the money for, his reply was, this is good. What does anybody need money for? Like, that's your answer. Wow. (laughs) I just killed... Three out of four people yeah. in the family because I needed money. Well, what would you need the money for? What does anybody need it for? <sighs> what an idiot. Wow. David Early was taken to the Arapahoe County Jail where he wrote out his confession. He smiled and smoked a cigarette as officers told reporters about the crime. That's a real douchebag move. Oh, yeah. He's sitting back there smiling, smoking. <sighs> like, yep, that was me. Mm. While in custody... David Early did several interviews with reporters where he claimed he would do it again under the same circumstances. Again, keep in mind, this is a man who he claimed was the only friend he ever had. And he does this. Yeah. Yeah. And then has no remorse for what he's done. Yeah. Not a good person. So that, I mean, that's not going to do you well for uh, your trial either. No. On December 3rd of 1958... After 25 minutes of deliberating, a jury returned with a guilty verdict. David Early was sentenced to death. Good. Mm -hmm. After several appeals with psychiatrists fighting for him, literally saying, look, he's, you know, he's mentally disturbed. 
Gurley finally ran out of options and his death penalty stuck. During the time Early was on death row, he never had a single visitor nor received not one letter from a relative. Not even from his mother who was still alive at the time. On August 11th, 1961, David Early was led to the gas chamber at the Colorado State Penitentiary in a pair of white prison-issued shorts. So his mom's alive and yes. wanted nothing to do with him. I don't blame her. She's like, you done did it now, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he may have had a, a messed up childhood or whatever, but I mean, she she's like, I'm not messing with him. No. So he's led to the uh, gas chamber on August 11th, 1961. He was seated, strapped into a steel chair where a priest read his last rites. David Early then spoke his last words. I'm sorry I did it. I hope God will forgive me. At 8 p.m. on August 11th, 1961, David Early struggled to hold his breath as white gas filled the chamber. He finally took a deep breath and was unconscious. At 8.05, his body was racked with convulsions, and then he went still. Two minutes later, at 8.07 p.m., David Early was pronounced dead. David Early was only 31 years old. Dang. Wow, I didn't know he was that young. I know. That is the story of David Early. Mm. So, you know, during the interviews, he's smiling, smoking a cigarette, and then when he's about to die, then all of a sudden he's sorry. Yeah. That's yeah. how it always is. Yeah. He wasn't on death row very long either. No. Um, the crimes pretty much happened in 58. He was convicted in uh, December of 1958. Uh-huh. In August of 1961, they're like, let's put these cyanide capsules in this <laughs> this pot here, and we're going to get some smoke going. <laughs> yeah, like the gas chamber is like the least scientific thing ever. Yeah. It also seems like it would be shitty to just sit in there, and you don't want to breathe it in because it's going to make you pass <laughs> oh, out. Yeah. It's like holding your breath. That's probably yeah. why they don't really do the gas chamber anymore. Because it was probably like, whoa, that's nasty. But, like, look, he's convulsing now. Hey, but that's to me, that's what they get. I, I agree. Yeah. When you do stupid things, I mean. Yep. Man. That would be awful. Just imagine being Kenneth. Kenneth Knight. Your entire family just got wiped out. Right. And you should back. being, what, 17? Yeah. Wow. Got lucky. You got lucky and got out. Yeah, he did. He did. I don't know why the dad, when he had gotten loose, why he didn't grab the gun. Well, he he lunged for it. He tried to. Oh, is that what it... See, I thought he just lunged towards uh, towards him. Apparently, because um, if you remember, David Early put, uh, went to the front door without right. the gun. Yep. So it must have been close by. Uh-huh. And uh, Merrill Knight... Uh, had just gotten loose by the time he was coming back with the oh, gun okay. into the door. Not much time. Right. Because, um, I mean, it was a pretty quick interaction with uh, Ashwa at the door yep, where he's yep. like, oh, he's in the bathtub. Oh, she's busy. Mm-hmm. Sure, I'll give him the letter. Yeah. I mean, that was probably really, that was probably, what, less than a minute. Yeah, probably. Right. Um, I like how Ashball came back into play, though. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's it's awesome. pretty radical. But I mean, <laughs> if you think about it, what are the odds? Oh, I'm dropping this stuff off, and then I'm going to a dinner party next door. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it, yeah, it was pretty sweet that, and it, he ends up catching the guy. You yeah. Know, mm-hmm. Running him down. So Ashball was pretty, pretty good hero. In oh, this, for sure. In in a story with tragic ending, but yeah, let's interview him. Uh, I doubt 1958. he's alive now. He may be really old. <laughs> really old. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was 70. Uh-oh. Don't hurt yourself. Oh. 71 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 71. Oh, just stop. <laughs> I didn't. It was 7,000 years ago. <laughs> I couldn't get my calculator out in time oh, to figure that God. out. Did they have cars then? <laughs> <laughs> they did. They did because they crashed them. Exactly. <laughs> 
Classic. Uh, Great story, Joshua. It was a good one. It was a good one. It was. Yeah. I'll give you that. What do you got for me, Rick? All right. If you haven't gone to our Facebook page, go ahead, head that direction, give us a like. If you have any uh, comments, questions, ideas, you can email us at eviltransgression at gmail.com. And uh, if you do give us a question, we will answer it the following episode. You can also go to eviltransgression.com and check out all of our stuff from merch to Patreon. And you can also now donate. If you mm-hmm. want to donate one time, if you don't want to be committed to, you know, every month, you can donate whatever. So anything helps. Yeah, oh, yeah, the for podcast sure. Going, so. That's true. Just scroll down on eviltransgression.com to the tip jar. Oh. Yep. So... It's a fancy name for just <laughs> <laughs> buy us coffee. <laughs> um, yeah, if you have not been to that, uh, our new eviltransgression.com, you've got to check it out. We also have blogs on there. If you want to check those out and read them. Mm-hmm. It's got our pictures, a uh, little paragraph about us underneath the pictures. It's, it's good stuff. Yeah, we're, we're going to be adding a lot more stuff here. Um, yeah, it's, it's still on. a baby. Yeah, it's our little our little project <laughs> so cute it's starting out just like this little podcast did <laughs> on a barbie car in the basement <laughs> oh man uh yeah you got anything i i did huh one more shout out to kiona yeah yes i, I really love this picture yeah it is sweet it's, yeah it is it is awesome <laughs> got our uh Evil couch. <laughs> you remember when we discussed yeah. the evil couch? Yeah. Uh-huh. Which the state of Ohio is probably going to ask us to design it. Yeah, we should. It's, it was a genius idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you think about it, why waste time just doing one execution when you can do multiple at <laughs> once? Yeah. Three at least. Yeah. Well, yeah. ours is three because there's three of us. So Kiona put the three <laughs> together. Uh-huh. And it's it's awesome, man. Yeah. Like, I just love I love the idea. That is pretty awesome. So uh with that being said, everybody good? Yep. yep. Alright, Evil Mob. Until next time. See ya. See ya. Peace. <laughs>